Say he's a way maker. My way maker. My joy. I believe that he is. My provider. My provider. My strong tower. And this is what I like about him. And he gave his life for me. This is what I call him. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Sweet. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. I come to let you know this evening. There's nobody like Jesus. Can I leave this with you? Listen. He's my heel. My heel. My say. Somebody said he's a way maker. My joy. Anybody oh, know that? He's a strong tower. Strong tower. And yes, I come to let you know. And he gave his life for me. Hey. His name is Jesus. His name is Help Jesus. Help me call him sweet. Sweet. Jesus. Jesus. You know what? Oh, nobody like Jesus. Nobody can hold Somebody me said like I searched Jesus. all over and couldn't nobody. find nobody like Jesus. 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 Nobody. There's nobody like Jesus. Come on, Michelle. I can search the world over Tell him. Trying to find somebody like him Oh yeah There's nobody like Jesus Woo. But can I be honest today Go ahead be honest with There's you. nobody like Jesus Oh There's nobody like Jesus Woo. I remember my grandmother told me What'd she tell you? That he'll be a burden bearer Yes Come. he will to the There's prison. nobody like Jesus. He'll be a company keeper. Yes, Jesus. Heavy low shell. What are you doing? Jesus. 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 God bless you and praise the Lord. It's time for Wednesday Live right here on your Miracle Radio Station, WFPM. We are simulcasting tonight and also over the Internet. 
whether you're watching us on YouTube, Ustream, or Facebook Live. Thank God for you being a part of the ministry of the First Pentecostal Family Worship Center. I am Pastor Elmer Hess Jr., and I thank God for another Wednesday night. We are refreshing our souls through fellowship and also through the Word of God. How's your week going this week? I pray it's going well. You know, the Bible says in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. If I can realize that with God, all things are possible, no matter what I'm facing, God is in control. And because he is in control, he will provide what I need when I need it. And so I thank God for his love, for his kindness. And most of all, we thank God for his grace. Tonight, we have a great uh, service in store for you. As always on Wednesday, uh, we try to share a word of encouragement, a word that will lift you. And most of all, it will bridge the gap in your week that you're facing, that no matter what you're facing with God, all things are possible. Uh, we have uh, a scripture reading of uh, Brother Percy Bean the third is going to be with us on tonight. We invite you to share the link with your friends and family. Come on and be a witness for the Lord on tonight. Listen, somebody needs a word from the Lord. Everything may be going well with you, but I want you to know that God's word is always on time. A word in due season can change a life. And so we thank God for that on tonight. Let's get ready to pray. Whatever your needs are, we're going to go to the Lord on tonight. Father God, we bless you. We thank you. Uh, your word tells us from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name is worthy. So first of all, we just want to thank you for being King of Kings and Lord of Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, that we are able to trust you. We're able to lean in on you. God, when it seems that we are overwhelmed, oh God, you tell us in your word that your word tells us that you are our comforter, you are our strength. And most of all, Lord, you come to provide whatever we need from you, we can receive. And God, right now, send hope, send peace, send your grace. And God bless us tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come together once again with the family of God. We thank you for the people of God who have set aside time to hear a word from you. And God, as we go into our service tonight, we pray, oh God, that you would anoint the man of God to give us a word, oh God, that does not come just straight from him, but comes from you. God, we thank you, Lord. A word in due season can change our lives. Now let the words of our mouth, meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, for you alone are our strength and you are our redeemer. In Jesus name we pray, thank God, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to continue on and we thank God for that word of prayer on tonight. And we have uh, all the way from Battle Creek tonight, we have one of our youth, a uh, young man who just recently graduated from Michigan State University, uh, Brother Percy Bean III. He's one of our young men from the church and we asked him to stop by and just read a scripture for us to encourage us on tonight. Uh, God bless you, Brother Bean. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I'll be reading from 1 John 2.15 through 2.17 tonight. Amen. Come on and read. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And the Lord add a blessing to the hearer, doers, and readers of his word. Bless you. Thank you, Brother Bean. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful word. And that was our scripture uh, from uh, today. Uh, the Message Bible says it like this. Love of the world squeezes out the love for the Father. Listen, or everything will pass away but our love for Christ, we want it to stand forever. What a wonderful passage on today. Uh, Brother Bean, thank you for the scripture reading. At this time, we're gonna prepare for worship and praise. Uh, did you come to praise the Lord tonight? We're gonna lift up the name of the Lord. Come on, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing and let's move into the presence of the Lord and let's worship the Lord together. And we'll be right back. God bless you. Away. I give my 
Oh, yes, the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. And we give him glory. And we give him praise. And we just thank God for worship and praise on tonight. And we pray that you were blessed by the music. Amen. We attempt to bring in the atmosphere of worship and praise. It's nothing like lifting up the name of the Lord. The Bible says that we are to sing with an understanding. Uh, listen, when you are able to go through things and God brings you out, you sing with greater clarity and the purpose of knowing who Christ is and worship and praise gets us into the presence of the Lord. And for that, we are grateful on tonight. We're going to call for Pastor Hess Sr. I want to just say hello uh, to Pastor and uh, welcome him to the uh, service on tonight. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Dr. Hess. What a joy it is once again for us to be here for refreshing for our soul on Wednesday night live. We're going out live uh, over the three radio frequencies. We're going out live, uh, you know, through the YouTube and Ustream and through our website. And it's just a joy to be able to uh, meet with the people virtually. Yes, we're meeting virtually and uh, we're looking for the Lord to do great things as he has already done. I, I enjoyed that praise and worship on tonight. Dr. Hess, uh, the one song was I was talking about how I give myself away. Oh, yes. And uh that's a fact. We are giving ourselves away. We're either giving ourselves away to one thing or we're giving ourselves away to another thing. But it is a fact that as we go through life, we are actually giving ourselves away. And so we want to make sure that as we give ourselves away, we give ourselves away for the glory of the Lord. And again, I want to thank God for all of our listeners. And Dr. Tess, we received some mail today all the way from Savannah, Georgia. Wow. We just God. Thanking and praising God for all of our viewers and those that listen through TuneIn Radio and through our radio station. Thank God for each of you on tonight. And for those of you that are in need of prayer, we want you to know that we are praying for you. We wake up during the night and we pray prayers for the people of God that we know are dealing with situations. And we just want you to know that God is yet on the throne and he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God bless you, Pastor. I wanted to. Uh, bring you in before you brought the message just to encourage the people to uh, continue to be steadfast in uh, what they're doing in the season that we're in. We're not out of the woods yet. And this is the reason we're still uh, meeting virtually. We know that there are certain things that we have to uh, come in contact with other people. But uh, if we have an opportunity to worship safely, that's what we're doing. And uh, I, I was blessed to get my last vaccine shot today. And and I'm feeling pretty good. My wife, my son, we uh, went on today and we're just thanking God for the opportunity to move forward. But we're moving forward by faith and trusting God and believing God. And we want to stay in that vein of being uh, cautious. But yet we're walking by faith and believing God. What do you say to that on tonight to the people of God? Well, Dr. Hess, uh, I say that uh, that's what that's wisdom. I was sharing pretty with you. I, I talked to leaders. I talked to bishops not daily, but uh, weekly, and we'll share with them certain things. And I want to share with the people of God on tonight that I believe that um, out of this uh, pandemic, matter of fact, I've got it in my message on tonight, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I just believe that God uh, has a message for the globe during this pandemic. And I think if we don't learn how to do something better, wow. I believe we're going to miss the whole purpose of the portion uh, of the pandemic that we're going through that God has allowed. I believe there's a message. There is something for especially the people of God to learn how to do better. And again, I, 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 I believe in that scripture where it says that wisdom is the principal thing, or I change the word around a little bit to primary thing. It's the, it's the base. And when you have wisdom, then everything else will line up. I'm just thankful for the people of God. I'm happy that you your family, you got your vaccine, we got ours. And so we're looking for the Lord as we go into the future, but we're not going to rush. We're going to uh, be cautious as we move forward, but we're yet praising and thanking God through the means of virtual uh, use stream and the ways that we're doing it at this time. Pastor, as you were uh, talking, I thought of, uh, I know you're about ready to get into your message, but I, I, I thought about Moses and the people of God and how every step that they take, because our greatest asset is hearing the voice of God. Every step that they took, whether it was a pillar of cloud by day or a pillar of fire by night, they didn't move until God said to move. 
And what I'm hearing you, you say is it's important that we still stay connected and we follow the leading of God to make sure that we are in alignment with uh, what he has to say regarding the situation. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Hess, th th there is not a battle between wisdom and faith. Come on. Uh, wisdom and faith go hand in hand. And so a lot of times people say, well, I, I'm using faith, but, you know, I'm not going to use wisdom and I'm not concerned. And uh, again, I've, I've had uh, some long conversations with some of my best friends. Uh, it seems as if I've almost lost some friends uh, because of this COVID thing. Uh, not necessarily passed away, but uh, just a difference of persuasion, difference of opinion. Uh, but I just think that wisdom is the primary thing. And if we can use wisdom, God uh, allowed the people to use wisdom when he led them. Uh, through the desert, he led them, you know, pillar cloud and also a pillar of fire. Uh, then they had to use wisdom. They 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 couldn't they couldn't go at the wrong time. God allowed the people of God to have the wisdom to know when to travel, mm -hmm. and so He provided a light for them to travel, and then He provided also covering for them to travel as well. But it was a difference between how God led the children of Israel and how God led the enemy that was coming behind them. So that's how they stayed ahead of Praise the thing God. that was coming to destroy them is they listened to the voice of God and they used wisdom. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, the question was asked, is there a word from the Lord? And I believe that God has a fresh word for us on tonight that will move us closer. Praise God to the destiny that God has established for us. Without any further delay, we're going to ask for Pastor to come and share the word of life. Listen, receive something from the Lord as the man of God shares God's word. God bless you, Pastor. God bless you, Dr. Hess. And again, uh, I meant to uh, thank God for our brother Percy Bean III being with us on tonight. As you said, a recent graduate uh, from Michigan State uh, University and uh, was actually born in our church. And we thank and praise God for that young man on tonight. We're going to go to God in prayer. Then we're going to get into this word. I'm going to absolutely take my time. And I want you to hear what the Lord has to say to you and to me on this evening. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do honor you. We thank you. We bless you. We lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. We pray for the people that are in need that we pray for whatever the condition may be, whatever the situation may be, Lord, you're able to assist us. You're able to help us and lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Now, we have a wonderful background that we generally use on Wednesday night, but tonight I wanted to put up my 40th uh, pastoral anniversary background because we're yet celebrated uh, my 40th year pastor. And I have a I have a 40 year pastoral message that I think I'm going to share with the people of God on tonight. Give me about 25 minutes and I'll be through with this word in the book of Jeremiah, the 32nd chapter uh, verses 20 and 21. You will find where it says you have set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt to this day and in Israel and among other men. And you have made yourself a name as it is this day. You have brought your people Israel out of the land of bondage, out of the land of Egypt with signs and wonders, with a strong hand and an outstretched arm and with great terror. A couple of verses of scripture in the book of Hebrews, 11th chapter, verse 24, 25, and says, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse 25, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures or the passing pleasures of sin, the passing pleasures of sin. Last verse, verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the, tre than the treasuries in Egypt for he looked to the reward. Moses looked to the reward. Tonight, I just want to take my time. I just want to share with you what's on my heart that we're celebrating our 40th year. We weren't able to have a large, big celebration, but I'm going to enjoy this 40th year as the Lord gives me strength and takes us through. Tonight, I want to talk to you. I want to specifically talk to you about there is a better way. Not there was, but there is a better way. I remember I preached a message many, many years ago, and the message was a taste of better things. Often people think that bigger and better 
is the same thing. I'm not talking about bigger things. I'm talking about there is a better way or a taste of better things. I want to speak from my heart tonight because if things are going to get better, things do not get better in and of itself. The way that things get better in the lives of each of us, whether you're saved or whether you're not saved, is you choose. You choose a way or a better way. The way has been made, but you have to choose if you're going to walk in the way. You have to choose. You have to be intentional. You have to be deliberate. And you have to choose the best, not for what's behind you, but you have to choose going forward for what is ahead of you. That is, you want to make sure that you're walking and moving toward the better way. In order to get to the better, you must leave the rest behind. I said, if you're going to go into the better, you must first leave the rest behind. In the book of Hebrews, the book of better things, that's what many call it, especially the 11th chapter, all 39 verses of that 11th chapter. But I want to extend to each of you a taste or a sample of better things. When we look at the life of Moses, we look at not only the life of Moses, we're not looking at Moses' life. We're looking at the choices that made in that Moses made in his life. When you're going to have faith, faith requires two things. It requires a refusing and it requires a choosing. I say when you're going to have faith, especially biblical faith, it requires two things. You either have to refuse or you have to choose or you have to do the both but you have to refuse the world and then you have to choose to follow the way of the Lord. And I believe that a portion, as I said just a few minutes ago when Dr. Hess and I were talking, I believe that a portion of the reason of the global pandemic is in part that God is trying to reveal to us a better way. The book of Hebrews is the book of better things and better ways. And so the word of God in the book of Hebrews, it is uh, giving us an example of how things can get better. If by some chance we survive this pandemic, and I'm believing that we will, and we haven't come to understand a better way, then we have missed the message of this pandemic. And I say that again, if by some chance, after we survive this pandemic, and we haven't come to understand a better way. God is trying to show us a better way in every area of the economy. Businesses, they're finding a better way. They're scaling down. They're doing things differently. They're heeding the message. And I remember during the recession, the banks, they learned the message of the recession. Uh, the consumers didn't learn the message, but the bankers, they had dodged a bullet. And they knew that they had dodged a bullet and the government had to bail them out. But they learned the lesson. Listen, life is full of lessons. Life is full of choices. And so we cannot come through this pandemic without learning a better way to serve God, a better way to live for God. Many people, they keep saying, I can't wait to get back. I can't wait to go forward. We're going forward into a better Way Many of you may know uh, that in 2020, uh, I observed my wife and I, our 40th year of pastoral service here in the city of Battle Creek, the First Pentecostal Family Worship Center, and being an active full-time pastor, plus evangelizing for a portion of those years before and even while I was pastoring, I would guesstimate that 52 weeks out of a year, speaking at least twice a week for 40 years, I have probably, I said I have probably offered the gospel in sermons and messages well over 4,000 times, possibly 5,000 times. It all depends on how many times a week that I have ministered. I have ministered at least twice, sometimes three times a week, sometimes revivals, four weeks, five, uh, five days out of a week, six days out of a week. So I have been ministering 
for 40 years, this word of God. And as I reflect over those 4,000 or those 5,000 sermons or messages, how many people I have attempted to make it known that Christ has provided us a better way. But here's the catch. If we choose the better way, the better way is not automatically. The better way is not hereditary. You have to choose the better way. And so when sermons come, when messages come, when thoughts come, when nuggets come, you have to choose if you're going to receive the word of the Lord. So again, the book of Hebrews, it speaks about better things. How many of you want better things? I want better things in my life. I want better things for my family. I want better things for our congregation. And so to exercise a biblical grade of faith. Now, there are many kinds of faith. There are many grades of faith. But to exercise or to implement a biblical grade of faith is to have confidence about an expectation without visible proof that it will happen. I said in order to exercise biblical faith, when you're exercising biblical faith, it's different than just exercising a faith where you're going to sit in the chair. But to exercise a biblical grade of faith is for you, first of all, you have to have confidence about or regarding an expectation, something that you're expecting for the Lord to do. Your faith is based upon not having visible proof that it's going to happen. You see, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but it's also the evidence of things not seen. So when you're exercising a biblical grade of faith, you are expecting without visible proof or tangible proof or something that you can put your hands on in advance. When you're having faith, faith is stepping out in advance of visible proof. But it's something that we have that is called faith. But you believe according to the word of God that it is going to happen. And so in order for things to become better, what makes this confidence possible is that you have to have trustworthiness of the object of faith. Let me slow down a little bit because I want you to get this. Listen, just saying you have faith, just believing that you have faith, just thinking that you have faith, just dreaming that you have faith is one thing. But do you trust the object of your faith. So when we pray, we're not just praying. We are praying to a person. We're praying to God. We're praying to the Lord. We're praying through the anointing of the Holy Ghost because we have trustworthiness in our faith. And we know that faith is a thing that is going to get the attention of God. So the question that we each must answer is this. Is God worthy of your personal trust? I said, is God worthy of your personal trust? Listen, when I ask that question, the first thing that comes to the minds of people is, I wonder what is he going to do for me? I'm not talking about what he's going to do for you. This question has nothing to do with what the Lord is going to do for you or even do to you or to do with you. When I ask, do you have trustworthiness in the Lord? It's all about in him. It's in him that we live, move, and have our being. It has nothing to do if my prayer has not been answered. It has nothing to do if my prayer has been answered. It has nothing to do with how the Lord has blessed me in the past. It has nothing to do how I'm expecting the Lord to bless in the future. What it does require is that we are trustworthy and that we believe and have confidence that God is going to do what it is that we have asked of him. And so as we ask of him, we have to ask in and by faith. And then most of all, we have to ask according to his will. Pastor Tony Evans, in his study Bible, someone just recently presented me with a, a beautiful uh, Tony Evans uh, Kingdom Agenda study Bible. I was looking through it today when I was reading uh, in uh, 
Pastor Tony Evans' study Bible. He likes to say that biblical faith is acting like God is absolutely telling the truth. Biblical faith is acting or knowing and believing like God is absolutely telling the truth. So you have to know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly. In the book of Hebrews, we notice that each of the, what we call heroes of faith that are mentioned in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, they acted or took action without visible proof. It was based solely upon what they believed without having tangible, visible, biblical, evidentiary proof. They just believed the word of God and they believed God. Our God, he longs to be more than just theology on a bookshelf or on a mantle over a fireplace or sitting on a cocktail table in our prayer room. God wants to be real in each of us. And he has a specific plan just for you. That's why I took my time on Resurrection Sunday. God had to go by his plan. In order for God to accomplish his specific plan that he has for you and that he has for me to accomplish God's plan, it's sometimes God allows you to get in or even God will put you into what seems from the untrained eye to be a hopeless situation. I said, God will allow or God himself will place you or put you into what seems to the untrained eye to be a hopeless situation. But it is not a hopeless situation in the eyes of God because God has a better way. God does this because he knows that when you finally see him for who he really is, you'll never view life the same way Again, again, we're not talking about, did he answer our prayer? Did he come to our rescue? Did he put a limousine in our driveway? Did he put food on our table? We're not talking. About, we're talking about who he is. You have to make sure that you pass on the baton of faith to those that you love. You have to tell them about the love of God. You have to tell them about the love of Christ and that there is a better way. In the book of Hebrews, the first chapter in verse four, Bible says being made so much better than the angels as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. We're talking about Jesus, the son of God. God must manifest in the flesh. Jesus, the son of God, who has by himself purged our sins, the Bible says, and sits on the right hand of the majesty of honor, on honor and is so much better than the angels. We're not talking about Gabriel. We're not talking about another angel. We're talking about how God sent his son in the likeness of sin and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. The Bible says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. So God has some better things. In 2021, God wants to make the rest of 2021 better. The Hebrews were told that they had better things that was available, things that accompany salvation and were being urged to go on unto perfection. That's what God was trying to show them. In order to get to the better things, we have to go on to perfection. There are some things where we need to have learned during this pandemic that we can perfect in our lives. We want to do things that are better. We want the Lord to give us the things that he has called us to have and the things that he has ordained for us to have. And when I look and see how the Lord has blessed us and brought us to this place, listen, I want you to know that God has some better things. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. Listen, I want better things in 2021. I want the better to come and be manifest. Don't you want better to come and to be manifest? In order for better to come, 
We have to do the things that God calls us to do so that better can come. When we know that better is coming, we know that joy is coming. We know that better health is coming. We know that the joy of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, those things are on the way. Jesus told the disciples to go to Jerusalem and wait there and stay there until they be endued with power from on high. Jesus was telling them that there's some better things that's on the way. And I'm telling you tonight, on this Wednesday night, on this hour uh, you know, of, of hope, this, this refreshing, this, this time that we're on now, I want you to know that better things is on. But Pastor S, you don't know what I'm going through. That's what I'm telling you. He's going to take you through what it is that you're going through. He's not going to take you to it. He's going to take you through it. And when we know that the Lord is going to take you through, we know that it was through a, a more excellent sacrifice. Jesus was made a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek and for the Levitical priesthood and the law made nothing perfect. But I want you to know that he's working on us. He has given us a better hope. He has given us a better testament. He has given us better power. He has given us better hope. But now that has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator. He is the originator of a better covenant, which was established among and upon better promises. Listen, I want you to know tonight, the Lord will make a better covenant. He has already established upon better promises, a better covenant. What you have to do is you have to know that he's waiting for us to do better. Listen, we can do better. This I've been pastoring over 40 years now, preached over 4,000, maybe 5,000 messages. Look, I'm, lo I'm looking for the Lord to do some greater things. I'm looking for the lives of the people that we have invested in. I'm looking for their lives to become better. For the Bible says, for ye had compassed of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoils of your good, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Listen, I know that we've gone through many things in 2020. First three months of 2021 has not been even a lot better. But the Hebrew people, the children of Israel, they had to go through some things, but they had that promise, having a better and enduring substance. They were being admonished to not to cast away their confidence. You got to hold on to your confidence which had great recompense of reward, the Bible says. And after doing the will of God, they received the promise. Listen, you've got to keep on moving. You've got to keep on going. You've got to look up because your redemption is drawing nigh. You can't look behind you. You can't look to the side. We desire a better country that is a heavenly and wherein God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. When we die in the faith, oh, we think about the promises that God has made to us. And that's what the children of Israel did as they journeyed. Many of them died in the wilderness, but they died in the faith because they were seeking a better country. And that's what we're doing here in 2021. We're seeking a better country. We're seeking the strength of the Lord. The Bible says, that God having provided some better things for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. But oh, I want you to know tonight, First Pentecostal, I want you to know tonight that God is working on your case. It doesn't matter what it is that you're facing. It doesn't matter what are the things, the, the walls that may be up ahead of us. All, none of those things matter. What matters is, is that we trust in God, is that we hold on, to the promises of God. Sometimes we have to get on the altar and just hold on to the horns of the altar and know that God is going to take us through. I thank God for this word on tonight. I'm not going to be a long time on tonight, but I just want to share that with you, a taste of better things. Listen, the Lord has something that he wants to show you within the next 72 hours that is going to be an indication that the Lord is going to give you something that's going to drive the tears, going to 
help your heart on tonight. Going to bless your health. Going to bless your life. If you just seek the Lord, these next 72 hours, I want you to look for a sign that the Lord is going to give you that he has not forsaken you, that he is with you, and that he is working on your case, that he is working on your behalf. We know that things come. We know that things may go. But I want you to know we serve a God who has never lost a case. When things happen and we don't get the outcome that we want, it does not mean that God has lost a case. And I preached a message many, many years ago. The Lord is yet working on my case. And when we seek him, the Bible says we shall find him. Somebody out there today, I want to pray for you. Your head is hung kind of low. I want you to look right in that camera. As I look right in the camera, I want you to look right at your iPad. Look at your phone, your television, whatever it is that you're viewing this on this evening. And I want to touch and agree with you. Doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in Georgia, whether you, you're in uh, Texas, whether you're in uh, Louisiana, uh, no matter where you are on tonight, Kentucky, it doesn't matter where you're here in Michigan, in Canada, wherever you are on tonight. I want you to know that the Lord is looking down upon you and he has a blessing in store for you. Let me pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Lord, we lay our hands out. We pray that I would bless the people of God, those that need a word of encouragement. Lord, I have shared with them on tonight that within the next 72 hours, Lord, you're going to reveal a hint of how you're going to bless, how you're going to lift the load, how you're going to turn some things around and we give you the glory. And I pray that I would save the unsaved on tonight. Lord, let at least five people pray this prayer with me on tonight. Come on and just pray with me on tonight. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, wash me from all of my sins. Save me in your precious blood. Lord, I give my life over to you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. God bless you on tonight. I pray that you're going to begin to enjoy a taste of better things. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. What a wonderful word tonight to encourage us. A taste of better things. There is a better way. And Pastor, as you were sharing the word of the Lord, I wrote down just a, a couple of things. Uh, that the better way is the way of faith in Jesus Christ. As you, you were sharing uh, from Hebrews, if we, we don't have time to read all of Hebrews, but it talks about better things, better covenant, better promise, better sacrifice. Uh, we have one who is better and his name is uh, Jesus. The scripture encourages us and lets us know, it, it just frankly tells us, uh, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Can you speak to how Christ makes it better? Because many times people say, uh, preacher, pray for me. I, I, I want to do better. But I want to make sure that we understand that the better that we're talking about is not being better in ourselves, but connecting ourselves up with the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you share just a little bit more, Pastor? Yes, sir. Dr. Hess, you know, everything reproduced after its own kind. Wow. Uh, every person is reproducing uh, others. Uh, we are investing in the lives of other people mm. to reproduce. And as you go through life and you look, and sometimes you look uh, back over your shoulder and you look at uh, the, the things that you have invested and you look and you see where sometimes it doesn't seem as if uh, there are that many that are being reproduced based, based upon the message. Mm. Uh, but what we have to know is that when we allow the spirit of the Lord to come into our lives. He comes in and he takes over and he changes us. Mm -hmm. It's wow. not that we can reproduce ourselves in the sense that everything comes from the inside, but it's in him that we live and move and have all of our being. And so we have to look to the Lord. Listen, as you said, there is a way, but Jesus didn't say, I am a way. Jesus said, I am the way. Yes. And so if we're going to live that better life, if we're going to live, uh, you know, where the Lord is using us and helping us in our daily lives, we're going to have to give our life over to him. Again, that uh, praise and worship song, I give myself 
away. So we have to we have to give ourselves. That's what happened to Moses. Listen, I didn't get into all of the details of my message on tonight. I, I may pick it up again later on in the week. But in order for Moses, Moses was standing on what many think was the precipice or he was standing on the on the on the you know, edge of becoming the next Pharaoh. He had a choice. Uh, the, the Pharaoh had invested finances in him, invested in his education, uh, invested in a position for Moses and all of those things. And Moses uh, could have stayed there and chose to follow after that. But the Bible says refusing. Mm -hmm. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the afflictions of the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin. For, so it requires a refusing mm -hmm. and then a choosing. Sometimes people, they want the blessings of the Lord. They want the better just simply by refusing or by choosing. But it takes both. It takes a refusing mm. and then it takes a choosing. Pastor, you, you, you. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I was looking back at my notes and I wrote some notes down from a few years ago and uh, you shared with us, there can be no choosing before there is a refusing. Yes. And as I was thinking about it, there are three things that when we think about Moses, you said it and, and I want to uh, just really zero in on it. His life was spared. Right. Many of our lives have been spared, but why did God spare our lives? Pastor, I, b I believe it's so that we will make the right choices. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have our past, our present, and our future. Most people say, oh, I've messed up, but that's only one third of our lives. We still have the present and we still have the future. Yes. But it requires that we realize that God has spared our life and there is a better way in Christ Jesus that we can choose, but we must first refuse. Uh, our verse for today and the verse that uh, Brother Bean, uh, Brother Percy read tonight, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. In other words, we've got to refuse the way of the world. What is the world? The world is the system that is without God, but with God, all things are possible, Pastor. Come on and speak to that for a few minutes on tonight. But Dr. Hess, uh, you, you, you quoted the one verse, I think going to the next verse, it talks about uh, when it speaks about love, not the world, neither the things that are in mm -hmm. the world. Yes, sir. And then the next verse, what does the next verse say? For if any man love the world, yeah, the love of the Father is not, not in him. So we have to have, there you go right there. That answers your question right there. We have to have the love of the Father, not on us, but in us. Mm. And when we have the love of the father in us, then he causes us to uh, make the better choices. Listen, we all have purpose. And uh, even in conception, um, we we are conceived and we come into this world. Uh, and so we have purpose when we come mm -hmm. in order to carry out the purpose. We have to get to a place as Moses did. As you said, they were, they were, there was a decree that had been made, had been signed to kill all of the males uh, that were, you know, young. Yes. And uh, Moses uh, was put into the bulrushes and was put in the right place at the right time, going in the right direction <laughs> because he had purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. When he had that opportunity and that opportunity is presented to him. His mother and his sister was there to take advantage of that opportunity. And then Moses was spared and Moses' mother was actually paid. She got a stipend. She got a stimulus check. Watch yourself. Uh, for taking care of her son that was supposed to have, you know, not lived. But God is able to just, if we know that we have purpose, if we understand that we have purpose, mm -hmm. we will do the things that we need to do to make the choices and decisions that we need to make so that we will be able to enjoy life and you know, have the Lord to bless us as we go further. Pastor, as we get older, um, the, the, we, we have a lot to think about, uh, even as we're young, because tomorrow is not promised. We often say uh, it's not your chronological age, 
but it's the n amount of time that you have left that is the most right. important thing. And so we can never say we're old or we're young as far as it relates to eternity, because we only are here as long as God says that we are here. But as you were uh, talking on tonight, I, I really, uh, really want us to realize that God has spared our life. You know, if we if we can change our perspective just a little bit, Pastor, I think it will cause us to see that there is a better way. Uh, many times, as you said, we're so uh, com compounded with so many things going on. But the Bible speaks to us and say that there is a way of escape if we look for it. I believe you often tell us. And so as we're looking at this passage of scripture and looking at Moses and uh, the people of God, Moses is not in this uh, Hebrews just to be in here, Pastor. But I really believe he is an example of how to move forward. But in order to move forward, you got to let some things go. You have to let some things go. So where God is taking you, you can't take everybody. You can't take everything because it's a better way. And you have told me and then I'm going to be quiet, but you have told me many times. Certain paths will present certain options. Mm -hmm. And so when we take the option of Christ, it reveals options that we would not normally see. And so people must understand, we must understand that there is a better way, but do we want better? If we don't want better, then we won't see better. But if we believe in Christ, who is the better way, not only is he the better way, Pastor, he is the best way. He is the, he's the way, as you said, the truth and the life. Um, so seeking Christ is so important in our walk with him. Dr. Hess, uh, our time is getting away from us, but you know, I, I, I got I got a full message here that I, I really didn't get into all of it on tonight. Mm. But the Lord dropped something in my spirit. I think it was yesterday. It might have been earlier today. Come on. About the choice that we make in our faith. Wow. F-A-I-T-H determines the choice of our fate. F-A-T-E. Wow. The choice that we make in our faith. F-A-I-T-H determines our fate f-a-t-e so if we want to make better choices if we'll choose to make better choices i believe the lord is going to turn some things around for people that have gotten themselves into situations and and don't know how to get out of those situations now went to him that is able to turn things around thank you pastor we've enjoyed the word of god and it has been a refreshing for our soul to remember uh that there is a better way uh, the Bible uh, speaks to us and encourages us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these other things will uh, be added unto us. It's prayer time, Pastor. And uh, we have some prayer requests uh, to uh, pray over. Amen. Believe in God. We have some praise testimonies on tonight. And I'll read a few of them. Uh, I'll just read them tonight, Pastor. And if we have any that are online, uh, you would like a prayer you still can uh, jot it down and we'll get you at the end here. But uh, Brother Jerome is asking prayer for uh, the Smith and the Sharp family. We're still yet praying for the Sharp family. And you have an announcement that you will share uh, with us in just a moment. Uh, Mother uh, Ellis and Sister uh, Stanley are asking for prayer for both you and I and continued prayer for the bereaved families, for healing uh, for our nation and prayer for our president, for our leaders, for those who are uh, leading us. We are praying for them. We need wisdom. Uh, the Bible says that we don't have wisdom because we don't ask for it. But he said, ask according to the word of the Lord. And then Sister Shearer is uh, continuing to ask prayer for us and for the church families, brothers and sisters, love and understanding. Amen. For the poor in spirit and prayer that the Lord will keep uh, her close in his loving arms. And then she has a, a testimony, Pastor, that God blessed her to pay off two loans today. Praise God. I tell you, God is still in the blessing business. Praise God. In spite of what we're facing, there is a better way. And so we're praying for all of the saints and uh, praying for uh, others. And Pastor, would you like to share now before we go into prayer? Yes, well, thank you, Dr. Hess. Uh, we uh, regret to have to announce today uh, the passing of, of one of the brothers of one of our deacons, uh, Mr. Charles English. Uh, passed away on this week, the brother of one of our deacons, Deacon Donald English and Sister Arlena English. Uh, we're just praying for the English family. We're praying for uh, the entire bereaved family on tonight. Uh, 
the um, viewing will be on this Saturday at 11 a.m. at 321 Main Street. The viewing for Mr. Charles English will be on Saturday at the Whitley Chapel there at 321 Main Street. Uh, they're following the CDC protocols from 11 until 12 for the viewing. And then there will be a celebration of the life of Mr. Charles English uh, that will take place at 12 noon at 321 Main Street. Again, to his children and to his family and to all of the people of God that are involved in uh, knowing uh, Mr. Charles English, just want you to know that we're praying for you, Deacon English and Mrs. English and entire family. Just know that we're praying for you. We're going to pray. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we honor you this evening. Lord, we pray that I would touch the people of God everywhere. Those that are bereaved, we're yet praying for Deacon and Sister Sharp. We're praying yes. for uh, Deacon and uh, Sister English and yes. their families. And we're praying, Lord, that your hand would be upon these bereaved families right now. Lord, we're not ceasing to pray, no. but we're praying day and night. And we thank, thank you, Lord. We thank you for the testimonies of praise on tonight, the other testimonies that have come in. We're praying for the Smith family. And, yes. and we're just looking for the Lord to do some wonderful things in the lives of the people. And I want you to touch the sick everywhere. everywhere. And Lord, we give you the praise and we give you the glory right now. In Jesus' name, thank God. And amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. And thank you, uh, each one of you, for being a part of the ministry on tonight. We often uh, say that without you, we cannot do this. But without the Lord, we could not uh, do any of this. And so we thank God for you. And we invite you to uh, go to our website, www.firstpen.org. You can connect with us. Praise God. You can give securely. Amen. And you also can follow along as we read the scripture, as we study the word of God together. Listen, this is a season, praise God, to seek God with all of our heart. And until next time, may God richly bless you. We will see you Saturday evening at 6 p.m. And then this Sunday at 11 a.m. God bless you.